how did your city protect its uh, water supply system from any chosen threats? So, um, as I mentioned, the reverse osmosis filter would filter out the microplastics in the system to prevent people from getting sick, as well as pollutants and heavy metals. And by recycling the gray water, we, we diminish the threat of running out of the water supply. Um, what types of engineers helped create a resilient water supply system? We had many different engineers involved in the building of the city, but some of the main types were water, solar, and civil. While you were creating your project as you're going through from design to creation, you probably came up with some challenges and you also came up with some you know, moments, aha moments where, yeah, I can solve it this way. Can you tell me some of those? So, for example, there were some challenges where someone would think of an idea and then it would turn out that it probably wouldn't be possible then, or there's some ideas that were just too futuristic for our model. Um, we usually solve these by a vote. And a lot of the things that we came up with in the city were came up with, as you said, an aha moment where we come up, where we came up with an idea that we really thought would work. We researched it, and then we imagined some extra parts to it, and it turned out that it would work. One of these was the transportation system, which was thought of, researched, and then we found that it actually could work. Another big thing was trying to figure out the proper scale for our city. Yes. Um, how did you well, we, had, we ended up splitting our city in three different sections, so we could use a scale of one inch equals 50 feet. By splitting up in the sections, like I said, we could get everything done. And there's also, um, we also had some challenges with coming up with moving parts and mm -hmm. coming up with something reasonable that wouldn't cost too much or, you know, and we could actually do. Yeah. And of course, research was a big part of this project because of course, some of the ideas we've come up with, um, ideas that we've gotten from the internet that people were thinking of, and we combined them into something that yeah. would probably work More in the future. Yeah. How did your city support low-income or vulnerable residents? Um, uh, as I mentioned, the public transportation is free, so anybody can get anywhere, anytime they want. And of course, there are numerous uh, schooling opportunities for free, for example, public school near and inside the city, so that children may get a good education. Um, do you have any way to store power from your solar panels that isn't used? That way, if you do have a power outage, that'll kick in? Yes, we do. All excess power is like we said, we have these storage facilities located all throughout the city, even and over here. All, of the, all that excess power is used to pump water up to these towers. The water stays there until we have a power shortage. This water then comes back down, creating energy. That creates energy by spinning the turbines, and as we did say, it is pre-filtered so that it, so in a disaster they have energy and pre-filtered water. What was the most difficult challenge uh, when, when you encountered building your city? I think the most difficult thing was, since the city is so um, spread out, we couldn't include the whole city in our model without having some scaling issues where everything would be tiny. So we had to come up with a compromise where we split it up into three separate parts, and we would show each most important or main part of the city in our model. And of course, scaling was very difficult. There were mistakes along the way with scaling. We had to go back and fix those. And scaling the buildings and and um, other aspects of the city was probably one of the most difficult things to work on. Another big, dif another difficulty we had along the way was definitely moving parts. We're trying to figure out where can we incorporate a moving part where it'll actually be usable in the future. We have time for one more question. Uh, what measures does your city take to prevent slash reduce the pollution? Um, as you mentioned, the solar and hydropower are the main sources of energy, so there will, no, there will be no carbon emissions from burning coal or anything like that. And uh, the public transportation is solar and therefore electric, which means that since we welcome people to use our public transportation, there will be fewer carbon emissions since people will be using the electric public transportation, hopefully, instead of their own private vehicle.
We also have the PPP um, oh. Palmetto Public yeah. Protection Act. Yeah, so we can educate our citizens, uh, teaching them like what might cause pollution and how to reduce pollution on their part. Uh, tell us how your team transformed the recycled material into a unique part of your city model. The majority of the things that we use in this model are recycled. For example, we have bottle caps, things like that, including some parts of bottles. So we minimize costs when we made this. In addition, the stand that all of our stuff is based upon is also a recycled part that we found on the side of the road, which saved a lot of cost for our building. All these trees and stuff are sticks we found outside and recycled, or recycled like packing peanuts and stuff like normally we just disposed of and we're able to incorporate them as trees. Uh, what are the immediate or even long term effects? <coughs> Uh, on the health and safety of your city residents? Uh, well, it's for example, if the water system got polluted, um, of course there would be some issues because people would start getting sick. If we can't fix it soon enough, people will start moving out. And if, it, if we really can't fix it in the long term, it'll probably become unhousable because there will be no water. What, what industries drive the economy? Yeah. Most of it is technology based. Um, we have drone manufacturing companies, car manufacturing. Most of the stuff here is technology based. You also have our bioplastic parts, which create plastics or create like normal clothing stuff from hemp plastics. And then you also have our vertical roots, which is where all the produce comes from, as well as our leaf science and the Okay. Uh, can you tell us a little more about the engineering roles and the engineering design process involved in designing your city? Yes. The first, well, <coughs> the roles of engineers we used were mainly water, solar, transport, civil engineers, as well as wastewater engineers and sustainability engineers. How we incorporated our engineering design process in our city is first we had to imagine what our city was going to look like, what city we were going to do. So we chose Columbia. We then started to, we then met with Columbia water chain engineers and wastewater chain engineers, and they gave us a few ideas for our city. We then started planning our city. We then met with lead sustainability engineers, <coughs> engineers from the ACOM, and geologists from there a wastewater engineer and many other. Uh, tell me again, where is your uh, adults and your children educated in your city? We have public, sh public schools, not currently shown on this model right here. We also have the University of South Carolina shown right here, the Center of Science Building, and the Center of Science for Arts. And we also have Heathwood Hall located over here. So if I'm understanding from an energy perspective, your energy is created by solar and by hydro? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so if you have the weather doesn't isn't conducive for producing solar, you will be able to supply more via hydropower? Yes, that's yes. Any more questions? save the energy just in case there's a natural disaster or uh, if there's many cloudy days and the hydropower just isn't generating enough energy. We just prefer to play it safe and save the energy that we create in access. And how we store this energy is we have these big water storage facilities which currently don't have any water in them and then when we have excess energy we'll take that energy and use it to pump water up into these buildings. It'll then be stored up there until a time where we need energy, which then the water will calm down and spin those hydropower turbines, which give our city energy, 
and water is also pre-filtered with the pump, so we'll have energy and water in the result. How will you handle the growth of your city? Well, we're hoping, since we don't really want to expand too much horizontally, we're hoping to go up. So we're going to build taller buildings like we have, uh, like we have an example with our indoor vertical farms. Instead of having masses of land for crops, we have them in the sky. And since there's significantly more airspace today, we're hoping to build up to compensate for more pop for a, a greater population. And we have time for one last question. Um, I think you touched on some here, but I just want to ask, um, what food do the residents prefer to eat in the city, and where does it come from? I think you may have touched on some more. All of our produce comes from our vertical roots. We also have livestock fields around. 